Very good morning. It's Tila NTV. We are live from Kampala's Rene Conference Center. Now, as the science of sustainable agriculture, agroecology has led to identification of key principles, that is, agroecological principles, which establish, as well as argument, agricultural sustainability, an extensive body of evidence demonstrates on how efficient scaling up of agroecological approaches can contribute to ensuring sustainable and resilient agriculture and food systems today and in the future. Now assuring, among other elements, food security and the realization of rights to adequate food, environmental preservation, resilience to climate change and mitigation of the human um, GH, uh, GHG, we can call them the emissions, in the whole food system. Now, women's empowerment and increase the peasants' control over agri-food systems, these are very key when it gets to Pelham. Now, to bring this home, on site with me is Professor Seche Wachaus, the chairperson, Eastern Africa Regional Steering Committee for the Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative. And I have Mr. Wakuba, Alex, Commissioner Crop Production from the Ministry of of, of agriculture and we have Miss Taylor Lutalo, the country coordinator of Pelham Uganda and of course we have Ijuka Joshua, the program manager sustainable farming systems Pelham Uganda. The hashtag on Twitter you can put it as Pelham Uganda as we're celebrating 25 years in place. The topic today we're discussing the importance of the agroecology in strengthening Uganda's food and agriculture system. Good morning my panel. Good morning. Morning. Well, uh, I should say that this is very humbling to have you back, uh, Mr. Luakuba, and very, very passionate about the agriculture of our nation and, and seeing where we're going. And Pelham, Uganda, you're celebrating 25 years mm -hmm. in the business, reaching down the masses and making the change we want to see, and Professor, involving yourself on a daily to understand the deeper and deeper and deeper of these topics and Joshua leading this entire conversation on the ground as a program coordinator to make it come to life. Well, to start with, I'll start with you, Stella. What does Pelham organization do? We need to understand it and what are you known for? What's your niche? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Mm. Um, I'm happy to be here mm. and to share about Pelham and its journey. Pelham's journey dates back to early 1990s. Okay. Um, the founding of Pelham was inspired by three major things. Mm. One was the plight of smallholder farmers. Mm. Like you very well know, small f smallholder farmers form the majority of the farming community, over 90%, mm. for example, for the case of Uganda. And they have challenges like uh, markets, challenges of land degradation, mm. challenges of pests and diseases. So one of the issues, f uh, the inspiration was to address issues of smallholder farmers mm. in Eastern and Southern Africa. The second inspiration was the concern for natural resources. Mm. At that point in time, there were issues of land degradation, issues of desertification, mm issues of biodiversity loss were on the increase. So there was a need to address these concerns mm -hmm. and how they relate to agriculture and smallholder farmers. Uh, the third reason was um, the need to work together as NGOs in Eastern and Southern Africa. Mm. So currently Pelham is in 12 countries in Eastern and Southern Africa. Mm. We are in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, we are in Rwanda, Ethiopia, Malawi, Zambia, Zimbabwe, mm. Botswana, South Africa, and Lesotho. Mm. And we have grown over the years. We started as eight countries, and we are now 12. And uh, we have a regional secretariat that is, uh, has, is now on the move from Zambia to Tanzania. And uh, so when the, 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 the inspiration came, mm. it was for NGOs in that region in eastern and southern Africa to come together and address these concerns. Okay. And in 1995, there was eventually a launch of Pelham Association mm. in the region, which has grown since then. Currently, we, are in, um, we have a membership of over 280 NGOs in agriculture in the region. And the Uganda chapter has also grown mm. uh, from less than 10 NGOs to currently 60. We have a membership of 60. And I must say that 
yes, we are 25 years, but mm. those very concerns, <coughs> mm. the inspiration for the founding of Pelham is still relevant, okay. even after 25 years. We still have issues that affect smallholder farmers that mm. are biting. Mm. Uh, in the rural areas, we still have smallholder farmers struggling mm. in a number of ways. We still have natural resource issues around climate change, land degradation, mm. desertification. They are still real and even growing, worsening, okay. like for the case of climate change. And we still recognize and appreciate the need to work together. Mm. Because to create change, we need numbers, we need collaboration, we need teaming up. Currently, Pelham is in, um, has a membership of 60, and they are reaching over 104 districts in Uganda. Mm. Yes. That's a good reach. Yes. Well, uh, Stella gives us that perspective. Joining us for this conversation is Joshua, who is online. Joshua, if you can hear me, we understand you're celebrating 25 years as Pelham Uganda, as the, uh, the program's coordinator. Bring us to speed. Where are the celebrations? How are we celebrating them? And um, what should we expect as Ugandans with these celebrations going on? Thank you very much, Andrew. Hmm. Indeed, like you've put it, we have um, uh, a couple of events uh, mm. running uh, throughout the week, which we call the Week of Action. And the main uh, emphasis is on agroecology uh, throughout uh, the period. Uh, to kick it off, of course, is uh, having this uh, awareness creation and, and, and engagement mm. uh, to, uh, to ensure that the general public is aware of what agroecology is and start the debate on how do we scale this up. Uh, Tomorrow, uh, we shall be having uh, a launch of the uh, national uh, tree planting campaign. We uh, are planning, uh, together with our stakeholders and the member organizations, we are planning to plant 2.5 million trees uh, wow. within the course of one year. So the campaign is running from October uh, all the way uh, to, uh, to October next year, 2021. And the launch is going to, uh, of course, going to involve different stakeholders and uh, already preparations are underway. Now, of course, I cannot uh, publicly uh, declare where the events will be because we are also trying to ensure that we uh, adhere to the restrictions of, uh, mm. of COVID-19. But uh, what I can assure you is the stakeholders have in been invited and everything is, is, is at par. Okay. Now, uh, on, the, on, on Wednesday, uh, we shall be having uh, a national tree planting day. The different stakeholders all over the country shall be engaging in tree planting in celebration of Pelham, Uganda mm -hmm. for the, uh, the time that we've been here and also in response to the current challenges we are having of land degradation, try to see how we can contribute to this process. Mm -hmm. uh, on Thursday, we are going to have the, uh, the second, um, agro, uh, second Agroecology Actors Symposium. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uh, an online event, but also we'll have some physical engagements and already processes are undergoing. Uh, the preparations are in Hygia, and we expect to put up a very good show. Mm. And it's going, to be, uh, all, it's going to be streaming live as well on our YouTube and all other social media channels. Mm. And then to wrap it up, it's going to be on Friday, where we're going to be having the 10th Annual Indigenous Food Fair, uh, which where we've been holding this for the last 10 years. We bring together uh, farmers from all over the region to showcase the indigenous and traditional foods mm -hmm. all over the country. And the whole uh, campaign is about seeing how do we bring back these foods in our, uh, on, back on the plate mm -hmm. of the usual consumers. So the events are going to be scientific in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so mostly the participation from the public is going to be online. Uh, but of course, we're going to have some who will be participating physically, okay. uh, representatives from the different stakeholders. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. Now, bring it back to Stella here. With all this that you're doing, um, I understand the magnitude of 2.5 million trees mm -hmm. in one year. Mm -hmm. Are you working with government entities to make sure that you make these ends meet? Yes, I must say we are working with uh, government entities mm. as well as our member organizations that are spread around the country. Mm. Our member organizations reach over 3 million smallholder farmers. Okay. So we have the numbers. Mm. We have collaboration with the Ministry of Water and Environment. We have collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture. We mm. have collaboration with the Plant Genetic Resources Center mm. under the National Agriculture Research Organization. And uh, 
as well as other partners. We have been working in partnership with others and mm. we are confident that with numbers we can achieve this seemingly ambitious target. Okay. Yeah. In that to context, uh, Mr. Wakuba, given that you work in the uh, Ministry of Agriculture, yes. you've been working with Pelham. What do you make of this kind of partnership for over the years you've been in touch with them? Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. Mm. I can right away mm. emphasize that we have a strong and formidable working relationship with the Pelham. Mm. And uh, uh, I really feel happy to associate mm. with uh, the whatever is going on with uh, the celebration mm. and with the subject called agroecology. Mm. First, we have a formal working relationship with Peram mm. uh, by way of a memorandum of understanding. This is endorsed. Okay. Uh, I've been working with, uh, with Peram and as a ministry, we have been working with uh, Peram uh, in various uh, activities, in research, in publication. For example, we have published uh, four books mm. with Peram, as far as I remember. Mm. And the first one is The Selling Cake. Ah. And <laughs> that was ah. the review mm. and analysis of policies and uh, legislation relevant to sustainable agriculture. Mm. That one is going all over the world. Mm. There was another one that uh, uh, we also produced with Peram. And uh, I must say that I did the research mm. and they facilitated, Peram facilitated. Wow. Uh, we, we did one uh, on uh, the seed sector of Uganda. Mm. Is the future of small scale farmers bleak? bright okay. and it was also facilitated by Peram and funded by by Miserio and we did another one the contribution of ecological organic agriculture small scale farmers in Uganda mm -hmm. and uh, we have also been uh, participating in uh, policy formulation Peram has been participating in policy formulation for example the organic uh, agriculture policy mm -hmm. we've been uh, uh, interacting and uh, engaging in the, the review of the ministry. Mm. Uh, even on the ground, uh, we've been working with the Peram going to uh, the farmers. So government has been really in great partnership with them? Sure. Well, uh, now, to understand this, when someone speaks of um, agroecology, it sounds to be a mouthful of it. Mm -hmm. Professor um, Sechewa, well, you, you, you're more grounded to break it down for me to understand as a lay Ugandan, what is uh, agroecology? Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. Mm. Uh, viewers and listeners, mm. the term agroecology is not a mysterious. It is such a very simple term mm. that defines what actual practitioners in that area do. Mm. Now, we live in an environment, mm. and this environment we live in has different organisms in it. Now, these organisms, even where you are, where mm. each one of us is, it's very difficult there will be no other organisms. They are there around you, and each of these organisms has a function in that environment, mm. and they relate with each other, visibly or invisibly, mm. they are relating. Mm. You may not know that when you breathe, you breathe in oxygen from a tree or a plant, and the plant also gets your carbon dioxide that you breathe out. Mm. That is a relationship, a very strong relationship. Now, within the environment we live in, there are such organisms and they are all with the relationships. Mm. Now, when we talk about agroecology, we focus on that in a farming environment, okay. where we have so many different organisms, mm. including the farmer himself, the trader, the processor, all those are within that environment mm. where agriculture is taking place. Now, when we talk about agroecology, mm. we actually mean the type of agriculture 
mm. the form of agriculture mm. which is performed consistent of those relationships. Mm. The form of agriculture which aims at optimizing those relationships mm. in that farming environment. Okay. So you make sure that each of those organisms in that environment is benefiting you. Even those that seem to be antagonistic mm. to your farming, you look out the best way to handle them mm. such that they can actually benefit, benefit you. you. Mm. Or benefit the other that benefits you. So that is the form of agriculture that we cycle. refer to mm. when we talk about agroecology. Mm. Now, the concept of agroecology has been very much mixed up mm. with the traditional agriculture. Oh. We may say it is a common mistake mm. to take traditional agriculture as agroecology. Mm. The difference is that in a traditional agriculture, farmers try their best mm -hmm. to focus on the environment within which they farm mm. and what is there and how it can benefit them. True. But in most cases, they do not look at the nitty gritty of how each of the component organisms relate with each other. Mm. which is a deliberate concern in agroecology. It's a deliberate concern. We make sure, for example, bees, to understand how a bee contributes to your farming. And then you make an effort to protect it, aware of its benefit to, you. to your productivity mm. and profitability. Oh, yeah. So. That is a direct concern when you go agroecology. In a traditional agriculture, yes, you see them and you, yeah, these <laughs> insects, they are all around here. Oh, that is very good. Mm -hmm. But there is no deliberate effort mm. to optimize their being there. Okay. So you will find that a good agroecology established farm mm. will have, for example, flowers that attract bees, deliberately planted to attract bees. They may not be good scented for human beings, but for the they bees may they not be. even be food or vegetables for human beings, but mm. they are there specifically to attract those bees. Mm. So agroecology as a concept is scientific also. Okay. It's not just imagining what is there and you, you you try to put things together it is scientific mm -hmm. and it is built on a good understanding of the environment system okay so the entire system is in tandem with one another exactly that okay. is it andrew the mm. whole system mm. in that environment is working in and a in synergistic oh, yeah. complementary manner Wow. to benefit you, the farmer, mm. such that at the end of the day, you have healthy food, safe food, Enough and positive. in good quantities mm. for you to eat and, and also sell. to sell. Mm. And then we can talk about sustainability. Okay, once we have that. Well, you, you, you seem to want uh, to, yeah. to supplement that. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, mm. Andrew. Professor is absolutely right. Mm. There is a misconception and that uh, maybe agroecology is the is usual a tradition, is the usual mm. <laughs> agricultural yes, practice, yes. we know. But uh, the fact is that, uh, yes, whereas agroecology tends to be closer to mm. the traditional farming, mm. mm. to the indigenous way of doing mm. our agriculture, mm. there is science behind it. Scientific principles mm. are employed in discharging agroecological mm. farming. Yes, agroecology uh, takes us closer to what you would do, uh, wish to call a natural setup. If it was uh, a forest, mm. an intact forest. And an intact forest is a, a case, is an example 
of a system that has uh, uh, reached ecological equilibrium, if I may use that word. It is undisturbed, mm. and that's why it is self-sustaining. Until okay. man gets in there to distort the ecological functioning of the system, and that's where degradation now sets in. That's what uh, Stella That's where degradation sets Boris. in. So agroecology is taking us back to that natural setting. Oh. It's taking us back to the natural setting. Mm. That's why we would like to uh, promote mm. agroecology. Mm. And I would like uh, to uh, differ a little bit mm. uh, from the way they have put it, those that have described agroecology from the books, that agroecology is a path to resilient and sustainable agricultural production. Mm. To me, uh, it is not a path. It's not a p uh, they say that it's the pathway. Yes. Uh, no, they say it is a, an alternative. They say mm. it is an alternative, mm. an alternative pathway to resilient and sustainable production. Mm. My take is that agroecology mm. is a study, is a body of science, a system of production mm. uh, that has an entry point and a wide entry point to resilient and sustainable agricultural production. Mm food consumption and livelihoods, if you like, sustainable food security. Okay. Um, that is quite made, now I understand that wh whoever is viewing this from home now, you understand exactly what is uh, agroecology. Ali Ronin had just started, maybe it was sounding more like an alien kind of um, topic, but now you understand. It's not the usual agriculture you and I get involved in, but it understands how one another works with one another to make sure that we have good food what that is healthy that is safe and that you can sell and eat as well as you know be stronger now bring this back to you stella and joshua later mm -hmm. why is it very important mm -hmm. to have agroecology in uganda um i can say it's very important mm. in terms of building resilience of farming communities mm -hmm. um it has a lot of benefits, a lot of contributions to addressing current challenges that we are exp experiencing in the sector. Mm. I can say um, one of the issues is um, we have a, 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 an alarming challenge on malnutrition, mm. where we, we have about 53% of mm. children under five mm. malnourished, and of which about 29% of them stunted. Mm. And yet we can develop farming systems that can uh, address such a challenge. Mm. For example, agroecological farming systems promote diversity. One of the elements of agroecology is diversity, where you don't have a monoculture on the farm, but you have diverse foods. Mm. You have vegetables, you have the food, you have, I mean, so many food, food values on the farm mm. that... Uh, that uh, give healthy diets to the farmers and to the consumers. Mm. So uh, such diverse systems can help to address challenges of malnutrition. Mm. We also have issues around um, climate change, for example, where farmers uh, uh, are grappling with issues of uh, water, mm. droughts, yeah. and uh, agroecological farming systems promote practices that promote soil and water conservation, that promote practices that build resilience of the farming communities to continue producing, mm. even with, uh, with the challenges around them. And that diversity itself is a mother of, of resilience. You have a lot of options. Oh yes. If the maize crop fails, you can at least have something else. Mm. Tomatoes, all you yes, can Yes, so it generally helps resilience mm. of, the, of the farmers. Mm and also produces healthy food. Agroecologically produced foods are natural, are healthy for consumption, mm. and um, can address issues around um, obesity and uh, healthy lifestyles. So agroecological systems provide healthy foods on the market. Mm. They are not uh, grown with chemicals. They are... Um, they are grown in a natural environment mm. and also there is guarantee for sustainability. We are not looking at short term where we'll farm and then 10 years down the road the soils are degraded. Mm. They promote uh, sustainable environments and healthy soils. 
that can feed us, can feed the plants, feed the people, and also providing healthy food okay. for all of us. Um, Joshua, if you, can, if, if you can hear me, I understand you on the other side, but um, all that Stella says uh, makes it much more clear that it's entirely about the issue of attitudes. Now, you as a program director who has been on ground and you've engaged the farmers of this country, what do you make of them? Do they embrace the um, agroecological approach or we still have some hurdles? Um, yes, indeed, there is uh, a high appreciation, especially among the smallholder farmers, mm. uh, with respect to agroecology. Uh, we're seeing, uh, and there's a movement. Right now, there's a, a, a growing movement of farmers embracing agroecological practices. Mm. And uh, maybe to just add a little bit on the understanding of agroecology, there's the bit of agroecology as a practice, which Professor and Stella and uh, Alex have talked about. But also, uh, there's an element of um, agroecology as a social justice movement, mm. where uh, farmers come together uh, amplify their voices to ensure that uh, the policies, the practices that are being promoted mm -hmm. uh, in tandem with their beliefs, with their traditions, and so on. So we are seeing uh, agroecology beyond just the practices. We are seeing uh, rebuilding those relationships that people have within the community, first of all, but also uh, the relationships and the interactions they have with nature. So looking at the challenges we are having right now, like um, the rate of land degradation uh, right now, the high population growth, which we have to feed, uh, you get to see that indeed we need to rethink the way that uh, the food is being produced and the food is being accessed equitably uh, in our community. So uh, through a lot of um, engagements from the various stakeholders, including the Pella member organizations and several other agroecology actors within the National Agroecology Actors Platform, we are seeing a lot of enthusiasm where smallholder farmers are beginning to appreciate, first of all, like Professor has put it, that agroecology is not business as usual. It's building on the traditional knowledge and integrating it with the science uh, to increase uh, productivity sustainably. So with this appreciation and also with the fact that it increases, the, it, it, it builds on the indigenous knowledge, it becomes more relatable mm -hmm. with the common person. Uh, as opposed to the, uh, the technologies or the practices that are just being imposed on the farmers. So I think that's why it's, it's becoming very easy for the smallholder farmers to relate with and to adopt agroecology. And we okay. believe that with a proper strategy of how we can engage as okay. actors, we can surely uh, achieve a lot more as a country. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. Now, Professor, you want to add on that? Yes, thank Please. you very much, Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, Agroecology mm. is extremely beneficial mm. to a country like Uganda. First of all, mm. agroecology, given its environment-wide perspective, mm. embraces all sectors. Mm. We have a challenge of having sectors working together. Mm. In agroecology, you find the unifying factor of all sectors. Mm. You can see that the environment, issues of health, yes. issues of education, mm. issues of transport, and with what um, uh, we, we have just listened to that we have the aspect of social engagement. Mm. Th that Inclusion. is all about communication. Mm. And the mm. issues of cooperatives become even much more easier. Mm. So you can see that instead of a fragmented system of addressing human needs and aspirations, mm. we now get a more cohesive way of dealing with them. Mm. And a more intertwined way of dealing with our needs and aspirations. Mm. Andrew, your needs, my needs, the mm. other listeners' needs, they are all the same as the needs of the community. Mm. They are all the same as the needs of our country. True. Even the region, mm. even the continent and the world. Mm. So when we have a way of looking at all of them in an intertwined, complementary way, mm. we then achieve them better. 
That's why we have yeah. sustainable development goals mm. to which Uganda is a signatory, sustainable mm. development goals. Mm. When we look at agroecology and all its intricate in nature, mm. we find that it addresses 16, mm. able, it addresses 16 mm. of the SDGs. Wow. Yes. Wow. Now, what does that mean? It means when we embrace and actually practice and adhere to agroecological principles, issues of achieving sustainable development goals mm. are just a walk away. Th th they'll be just a walk yes. away. <laughs> so that is the importance of agroecology. Mm. It is much more than just producing and eating and selling. It helps us to achieve most of our needs and aspirations as communities as, communities, wow. as a nation mm. yeah well thank professor you. thank you so much for throwing more light on that um just to bring this to context uh i want to understand from you stella what are the current agro, um, agroecology initiatives that are around east africa as a region um or in the private sector in uganda and later we'll have also the the, the public sector as well what are some of those initiatives? And if I'm a Ugandan, how best can I tap into them to benefit? Mm. Okay, thank you very much, mm. Andrew. Um, for Eastern Africa, I mm. think um, Professor will say something about okay. that because From the he's regional the chairman okay. of the Regional Steering Committee of the Ecological oh, Organic yes, Agriculture yeah. Initiative. Mm. Uh, but I'll talk about Uganda. Mm. Um, we last year we held our first National Agroecology Actors Symposium mm -hmm. and it brought together over 360 stakeholders from around the country, people wow. who are passionate or doing something about agroecology. Mm. We had researchers, we had private sector, we had government, we had FAO also mm. and so many other stakeholders, mm. the list is long. And we were able to share about agroecology in depth mm. with regard to research, with regard to extension, markets, and so many other aspects. Mm. And as, a, uh, as, uh, as stakeholders that came together, we agreed to uh, form a national agroecology actors platform. And this platform is hosted at Pelham. Mm. This platform has uh, a structure that is aligned with the African Union, ecological organic agriculture initiative. So we have a national steering committee mm. for this platform that is chaired by the Ministry of Agriculture. And we also have it representative of so many other stakeholders, including academia and private sector, among others. Mm. So that's what I can say is one of the overarching uh, platforms for okay. agroecology in the country. But we also have different initiatives and projects that are, that are uh, running. Yeah, that uh -huh. are being uh, implemented. For example, we are part of the Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative. Mm. We are currently the country lead organization. The initiative where uh, Professor uh, is uh, chairing from. the regional. Okay. So we are at, the, at country level. We are coordinating that and mm. it focuses on uh, research and applied knowledge that where uh, Uganda Matters University is taking lead mm -hmm. to ensure that the, the, there is growth in, in um, research on agroecology. Uh, we, also, we are also doing some work around value chain and market development. Mm. And uh, this is spearheaded by a small, whole small scale farmers forum called ESAF. Then we are also, no, that is uh, Kulika Uganda, sorry. Mm. And then we are doing work around information communication and extension that is spearheaded by SF Uganda, the Small Scale Farmers Forum. So uh, this is a countrywide initiative as I well. I, I love the way it goes round in circles. Even the way you're speaking, it's mm. agroecology way. Exactly. That it's <laughs> intertwined, I see, from the farmers then to mm. the university mm -hmm. with an arm of research. And then mm. these are young brains thinking forward. Mm -hmm. And then it comes back to the farmers again. Mm -hmm. I think I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Wakuba, now that is in the private sector. Mm -hmm. How is the public uh, uh, sector jumping into this, these initiatives? Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. I can say we are on the boat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, how, from uh, a policy point of view, oh, yes. 
you had with uh, just recently concluded yes, organic we had agriculture organic policy. Mm. Mm. And now we are moving into the law, mm. the organic agriculture bill. Oh, yes. So we are also up and running. Mm. We are on the bus. Okay. We are in that vehicle, <laughs> in the wagon. <laughs> yes. um, that is one at policy level. Mm. But also, operationally, we uh, are participating in implementation of that uh, AU, African Union, mm. Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative. Mm. And in East Africa, chaired by uh, Professor. Mm. In Uganda, we have uh, an Ecological Organic Agriculture Platform, and it is chaired by uh, Professor uh, Julius Mwine of Uganda Matters University, and I'm the vice chairperson. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there. <laughs> we participate it's a bus. in the planning, yeah. in the budgeting for the implementation of EOI. Mm. Mm. So we are in it and we are at it. Okay. Yes. We are hoping for the best. Now, okay. uh, Professor Seche will take us on a regional scale. Um, what initiatives that are there um, to make sure that uh, this conversation reaches to the person at the bottom of the pyramid? Yeah, thank you very much. Mm. As uh, Stella and Alex have said, mm. we have the African Union with an initiative mm. based on implementing a decision of heads of state. Mm. So this was in, um, passed in 2014 mm. that all member countries of the African Union would work together to foster the agroecological farming approach mm -hmm. on the continent. And since then, we have put together strategies and the projects to realize that decision, mm. to make it come true in our member countries. Now, in East Africa, we have, first of all, we have the continent-wise structure. So East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, and uh, uh, very soon North Africa, they all have regional secretariats mm. of the initiative. Mm. And they have regional steering committees. The East African Regional Steering Committee is the one that I head. Mm. So we have a regional platform mm. to which all nations with their national platforms are represented wow. and country lead organizations like Peram Uganda mm. participate in these uh, dialogues mm. and uh, together we forge ahead towards seeing the continent embracing and walking the talk of agroecology. Now when it comes to the East African region specifically mm. we have member countries of East Africa involved in this activity except Burundi is not yet fully on board but they participate in our meetings mm. but they are not as yet supported mm. for them to support uh, stakeholders in Burundi. Mm. Uh, however, even before initiative support comes in, surprisingly these countries already have activities running. Stella just mm. shared a bit mm of what is happening in Uganda. But there is much more than what is supported by the initiative. Mm -hmm. So what we do at the regional secretariat is to bring all this together mm -hmm. and uh, share the knowledge mm -hmm. and share innovations, new developments in the region and encourage each other to address uh, all the uh, emerging uh, issues, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic mm. issue. Mm. It has been uh, just last week, on Friday, we had a meeting, and it was the center of focus. How do we review our systems mm. and optimize them to perform better in the new normal? Mm. So the regional responsibility is just that, bringing all of us together and ensuring that we walk the talk okay. in the right direction. <coughs> I understand. So th these regional um, secretariats plug into the bigger vision of the continental approach. Exactly. Very interesting. Well, we're still having this conversation. It's entirely about uh, the importance of the agroecology in strengthening Uganda's food and agricultural system. Be a part of this conversation. How best to create what we call strategies for scaling up 
agroecology in Uganda that is meant to give resilience, high productive, ecologically sound and socially just food and agriculture systems for inclusive and sustainable national socioeconomic development. Well, uh, before we went for the break, uh, the professor Sechewa gave us how important ecological, uh, rather agroecology is, is very patent for us as a generation. Uh, Mr. Rokwa, you wanted to add your voice to that, how important this is. Yeah, thank mm. you, Andrew. Oh, yes, mm. agroecology is important for Uganda and Ugandans. Mm -hmm. Consider uh, the farming system of Ugandans. Mm -hmm. Majority of the farmers are mm. small scale. Oh, yeah. And for now, agroecology blends well with small scale establishments. Farmers, true. And small scale farmers are for years. Mm. sustain the economy and the GDP of Uganda. Absolutely. So if we are to promote agroecology, we have to start with uh, the, the majority producers in Uganda. That is the small-scale farmers. Those are the small-scale farmers. But I'm not here to say that uh, you cannot apply agroecology to extens uh, extensification, mm. to commercial and large-scale farming. No, you can. Mm. But for now, at this entry point of popularization of this system of agriculture, mm. we start with farmers. And if we are to talk about direct food security, mm. uh, then it blends well with our predominant agricultural production system. Wow. That's how important it is. That land in Uganda is inelastic, while population is elastic. What do we do? The option is to intensify, and it is possible with agroecology. Wow, that's very interesting. Joining for this conversation, thank you so much, Mr. Rokwa. Joshua, as a program coordinator on the ground, you've always been with people. We want to understand, um, tell us about the scaling up campaign for agroecology. What is there to scale, and how do we do this? Thank you very much. Uh, maybe before I go to the local, I just want to comment briefly that mm. the Scaling Up initiative uh, is being spearheaded by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and the initiative was launched uh, in 2018 uh, uh, during the second uh, uh, International Agroecology Symposium, which was held uh, in FAO headquarters uh, in Rome. Uh, so this it's, it's the process and there was a call to action to all governments and different stakeholders to take deliberate efforts for ensuring that agroecology is widely scaled up in response to the current challenges we are having in the, the food and agricultural system. So uh, Pelham Uganda and the different stakeholders are in, in, in line with this scaling up agroecology initiative and very a lot of updates we shall be getting uh, a very live update. Uh, at the second uh, Agroecology Actors Symposium on Thursday, where we'll be joined uh, online, where we'll be joined online with, uh, by uh, the FAO uh, headquarters uh, program officer in charge of the initiative. And that way, we'll be able to uh, see how the initiative connects uh, very, uh, very well. Now, at local level, the Scaling Up Agroecology Initiative is mostly uh, focusing on First of all, identifying the tested uh, agroecology initiatives mm -hmm. and then pu putting in place mechanisms, one of them being the, uh, the platform, like the National Agroecology Actors Platform, which can be able to coordinate the engagements uh, of the different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. They're able to share experiences with one another. They're able to learn from the best practices, but also have the platforms for farmers to continually share uh, these, uh, the, these, these innovations along the way. So we are continually working with our member organizations. We are working with uh, uh, the different stakeholders. We have uh, partners uh, such as TROCRA, or which is commonly referred to as TROCARE, who, uh, and, and several others, the Swedish Society for Nature Conservation, Bread for the World, all supporting these processes to see how can we effectively engage the smallholders, farmers, to ensure that they are at the forefront mm. of this scaling up initiative. And that's the beauty with agroecology in that uh, the farmer is at the forefront. It's about the innovations that the farmers come with together with the scientists and the researchers, mm. but also the social uh, element, looking at the gender relations in the household and all that. 
that we are putting at the forefront in the scaling up campaign. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Joshua. Stella, when he's speaking, he's speaking about platforms. He's alluding to innovation and he's talking to farmers. Mm. I need to understand the, the, the tech play in this mm. to small scale farmers. How is Pelham achieving this? How are we achieving um, the scaling up? Yes. With the, the no, these platforms, mm. when he mentions that mm. there are platforms where farmers can equally come and find information or get involved in one way or the other, now I. In my understanding, it mm. seems to be like it's more like technological mm. platforms or mm. where they could possibly go. Mm. Now, how are the farmers engaged in this mm. kind of way? Okay, that's a good question. Mm. Um, the farmers are involved through, say, mem our member organizations. We mm. work with these 60 NGOs that are working directly with millions of smallholder farmers. Mm. So there are institutions that provide capacity building to these NGOs okay. on agroecology, okay. technical aspects that mm. they break down and take to the farmers. Mm. So the farmers are aware and they have been part of the mo agroecology movement. Mm. As Pelham, like it was mentioned earlier, we have been uh, holding um, annual indigenous and traditional food fairs at national and since two years ago also regional fairs in the different parts of the country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which are dominated by smallholder farmers showcasing their agroecologically produced food mm -hmm. and seeds mm -hmm. seed diversity so they are part and parcel and the members take it down but we also have like you've seen we we we, we are working in collaboration with others mm. so we also have on one side also the academia like producing graduates in mm. agroecology that are also taking it down to the farmers yes. through extension wow yeah that's uh, that's interesting uh, coming to you uh, professor i want to understand why do we need a strategy to scale up ecology agroecology <laughs> in uganda to be exact uh you see and when you have a goal mm. to achieve, mm -hmm. you must all be facing the same direction. If you're falling, you fall in the direction. Yes, to achieve <laughs> that goal. Okay. If some of you are facing the other side mm. or backwards, then you will never achieve it. Mm -hmm. Or you will be slowed down towards achieving it. Now, we need a strategy to guide us towards reaching that goal. Mm. So we would like all the different levels of actors, all the stakeholders, to be walking the same talk mm. towards our set goal, our aspiration, our needs, mm. such that when we achieve, we are achieving them in a multifaceted way. Before we have talked about the multisectoral nature of agroecology. Mm. So we all, from health, from education, from environment, from all the different sectors that we, we have in Uganda represented by our mother ministries, mm. we must all be facing that direction and achieving those needs and aspirations. And that is the importance of having a strategy. That now, we all fall to the goal. Yes. Now, s national strategies are structured mm. in such a way that they fall within the continental strategy. Mm. The continental strategy is falling within the overriding strategy, which is the comprehensive agriculture, mm. the comprehensive agriculture Africa development, agriculture development program. program, the mm. CADIP. So the strategy of agroecology is anchored in there. Mm. So the whole continent has the same strategy mm. to achieve sustainability of agriculture on the continent. And our national strategies for agroecology are also anchored in there. Mm. So we are all facing the same direction mm. and we eventually achieve. Now, scaling up of implementation of this strategy mm. is based on 
our past and the present. Our past mm. has been, in as far as agroecology is concerned, focused too much in the direction of achieving more volumes purposely for export. Mm. So as to, to optimize the our business. getting of uh, the foreign revenue and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm. And of course, it has been benefiting us, but also benefiting our partners mm. in, in, in different parts of the world. Because mm. they also need health and safe food as we need revenue. Mm. Now, currently, based on that, we would like to scale up by developing a very strong lock marketing system. Mm. That is one of the, the, the focus areas. Okay. And then because of time, uh, Professor, uh, I'm going to tap you just because of, of time. Um, Mr. Rakuba, what existing policies do we have that can keep that strategy anchored to achieve the goal? Yeah, thank you very much. Mm. Allow me before I mention the policies yes. to say that if we are to be successful mm. in selling agroecology in Uganda mm. and the strategy, then we have to think of institutionalization. Mm. How mm. can we institutionalize it? Mm. And where does institutionalization mm. start from? Mm. And where does it end? Mm. And to me, for us from government, we start with the policies. Can we get it? Mm. into the policies, whether we have the policies there that we have to strengthen, to review, mm. or we write, we formulate new policies. And so it must have a framework. Mm. We have that framework, a policy mm. framework. Mm. So the first one, um, government, even the NDP, mm. ASIP, three, two, three, mm. we talk of um, sustainable management of natural resources, mm. we talk of sustainable land management, we talk of climate smart agriculture. These are some of the avenues mm. for housing agroecology. Mm -hmm. But we have a policy. We have mm. the organic agriculture policy mm. that we have just recently mm. um, unveiled to the public. After 16 years. After 16 <laughs> years. <laughs> and we're going for the, for the big. All the big years. But we also have existing agriculture policies. For example, the National Agriculture Policy of 2013, if I remember, 2013. Mm. And this one is almost uh, due for review. Mm. Within 10 years, it should be reviewed. Mm. Make sure, and objective number five mm. of the National Agriculture Policy talks to uh, a need for uh, conserving natural resources mm. upon which our agriculture thrives. Okay. So there, we can have it. But we can also mm. um, institutionalize one at policy level. We can also look at, at uh, the academia, the training institutions. Mm. Can we streamline agroecology mm -hmm. or integrate it in the training curriculum at all levels? Mm -hmm. Programs, can we come up with programs? For example, we mentioned the, e, uh, the African Union, mm. EOAI. That is an independent and specific program okay. that can uh, promote agroecology. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Rokuba. As we're winding up, in a minute, mm -hmm. Stella, mm -hmm. what are some of the strategies um, uh, are we going to use? He has, he has alluded to a couple of them. But what are those uh, that can be adopted here in Uganda? In a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would say that we first of all need that uh, platform to be active, the National Agroecology Actors Platform, okay. so that we are together as stakeholders, mm. speaking the same language, mm. having conversations, mm. and also discussing how does our agroecology uh, address emerging challenges, you mm. know, like mm. now we have COVID. Mm. You know, like having conversations around topical issues at all times. And we are having now annual symposiums on agroecology, mm. Um, we currently also have the, the, uh, a Google group with active information sharing nice. around agroecology, mm. new information coming through research, mm. and we plan to consistently have these spaces for conversations around agroecology. Mm. And of course also uh, another strategy is to work with the Ministry of Agriculture <coughs> to support, uh, to ensure that there is an enabling policy environment mm. for agroecology to, to thrive. Mm. 
Uh, we have, yes, we have some policies in place, some policy provisions here and there. But like you have heard from these conversations, agroecology is very, is holistic, it's broad, it mm. touches different sectors. Mm. But we are currently pursuing a national agroecology strategy, okay. which would be housed within uh, the mm. ministry. We are also working on seeing how to collaborate with the extension department under mm. the Ministry of Agriculture to mm. see that the extension workers mm. are retooled with skills in agroecology mm. so that they are able to take it to the farmers. Okay. Rich, yeah. Well, thank you so much. It has been quite a very interesting conversation. Those online, because of time, how I wish I could get there and they get your question. But thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. Like you had just was saying earlier as when we were starting the program, just was said how and when this is going to be celebrated. So go online on Facebook and Twitter, search for Pelham Uganda. You'll find on how best to engage with their celebrations of 25 years, amplifying the issue of ecology. But now the biggest conversation is around agroecology towards a resilient, highly productive, ecologically sound and socially just food and agriculture systems for inclusive, that means you and me, and sustainable national socioeconomic development. I'm Andrew Chamageran. Good afternoon.